jollof rice is one of the dishes that I like to make when I have people over. So today I'm going to show you some of the ingredients that I use to make jollof rice. I have about um, two to three pounds of um, boneless chicken legs here. I have three garlic cloves minced, one and a half teaspoons of um, grated ginger, some seasoning salts. I like to cook with a combination of salts. I have a very large onion that I chopped up, some fresh tomatoes, um, some nutmeg, three tablespoons of tomato paste, a can of tomato sauce, some habanero pepper. I'm, I'm of course not going to use all of that. I'll take a teaspoon of it. Some black pepper and oil. I have five cups of rice here that I'll be making. And I have nine cups of water. You can make this dish with just some chicken broth. But I'm going to create the broth from by boiling the meat. So I'll first of all put this on high and into that. I will season it with my seasoning sauce. If you want to use Maggi Cube, you can go ahead and do that. Use seasonings that you have available or seasonings that you often use and that should be equally fine. So I'm going to season this generously because I'm going to be pouring in the about four cups of water to create the chicken broth for the rest of the cooking. So I'll cover this and let it boil for about seven minutes. My seven minutes is almost up, so I'm going to add half of the onion. I like to cook um, parts of the onion with the meat, so I'm going to stir this around so that the salt would be well absorbed into the meat before I put in the water. So after the seven minutes, I'm going to add some cups of water to this. I had to add an additional three minutes to it. So at this stage, I think it's okay to add some cups of water. So I've added four cups of water. I'm going to stir this around and let it boil. But before I, I take off the meat from the broth, I'll have to taste the broth to see how well it's done. Um, if the, the broth is not well salted, then you're going to have issues. So when it boils for a while, you can taste it to see the amount of salt that you've put in it, if it's okay. I don't want to do it now because parts of the chicken are still raw. So I'll cover this halfway and bring it to a boil. After 15 minutes of, um, of boiling, I think this is great. I, I will taste to see the salt. That is awesome. So I'm going to be emptying this, lower the heat, empty this into a bowl here and start making the stew for the jollof rice. Use napkins to do this, but I'm used to doing this all the time. Working with heat, it's not a problem around here. So I increase it back. I add some extra virgin oil. These days I like to cook a lot with extra virgin oil. So I think I'll add about one third cup of it in here. And then I'm let it heat up for about a minute. Um, when you're making um, jollof rice, you can decide to fry the chicken and eat it on the side. But the route I'm going to take is the route I often use making jollof rice in our home. I'm going to make a stew and put the meats in the stew, take out the meats from the stew, then add my rice, my pre-washed rice, before I dilute it with the broth that I just created over here. When I do that, you can leave the rest of the jollof rice to cook on the, on the stove, but I always put it in a baking tray and bake it in the oven and it turns out very perfect. So now that this has been boiling for about a minute, I'll add the remainder of the onion. Stir it around. Increase the heat a little bit. 
and add the, the minced garlic to so all of it up. Stay it alone again. Add the ginger and now let this cook an extra one minute. Then I'll add the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to be using a combination of fresh tomatoes. These are uh, medium sized tomatoes, very ripe tomatoes that I've cut up into smaller pieces. And I have the tomato paste here. And I'll be mixing it with some tomato sauce here. Any brand of tomato paste sauce is fine. So after a minute, I'm going to add my fresh tomato. Turn it all around. So I'll just add all the tomatoes here. And I have extra water here. I'm going to be needing this extra water when I put the rice in the stew here. But for now, I'm going to add my tomatoes, season it a little bit, because remember that we're going to be adding the extra water. I'll add the nutmeg and then stir it around together until the tomato paste is well dissolved or well incorporated. We have um, ground habanero that we use at home often, so I'm just going to add a little bit to give it a kick, not too much, about a half teaspoon here. And since I made the broth, this is kind of thick, so I'm going to dilute the broth a little bit with some of the, I'm going to dilute the stew, excuse me, a little bit with the broth that I just created here. I'll taste this. The salt is not enough here. So I would, it's a great idea to season this stew well because this one is well seasoned. So that when you mix them together, it tastes really great. I'll add some black pepper. I'm going to cover this and let it boil for a minute or two before I add the meat from the broth here. So jollof rice can be eaten with a, as a light salad on the side. You can eat it with fried fish. Some people like to boil eggs and put inside. But today I'm just going to make the jollof rice with only the, the chicken. And it's a, a hit in this house each time we have company. After two minutes of the tomato stew cooking. I'm going to add all the meats into this. I'm adding the meats here because I'm not frying the meat this time um, so that it will cook for a bit in the tomato stew and would have a very great taste. So I'll take out all the meat, add it here, add some broth if needed. So that when I'm taking it out, I don't have too much of the tomato sauce attached to the pieces of the chicken here. So I'm going to stir this around. And I'll taste it to see how the salt and the other ingredients are. And this tomato stew actually can be um, eaten with some boiled rice, potato, with some pasta. It goes great with a lot of stuff. Tastes good. So I'll cover it again and let it continue to boil for two to three minutes. My tomato stew with the chicken in is happily boiling here. I'll taste it. 
again as well scissor here so if you want you can make your jollof rice with the pieces of meat in here but i'm not going to take that route i'm going to take all these pieces of meat out before i add the rice after having taken away the chicken from the stew i'm going to set it aside then i have my rice that is pre-washed here i'm going to dump all this rice in here And I already um, preheated my oven to 385 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll stir this around. It looks really yummy and the aroma is really good around here. With all the ginger and the garlic and the nutmeg that I put in. Looks great. So this five cups of rice would go a long way. So what I often do is to let this cook for um, five minutes and for the five minutes you have to stay from time to time. After five minutes of cooking in the stew and stirring from time to time, I think it's ready to pour in the rest of the broth. Remember, we started with um, we're using five cups of rice here. This pot is kind of small, so I'm going to be stirring this very carefully. I'm not going to be cooking this jollof rice in the pot. I'm going to transfer this into a baking two glass baking trays and then I'll bake it in the preheated oven. But at this stage I'll have to make sure I add extra water. But as you can see it will fill up my my bowl here. I'm going to be using all the nine cups of water for the rice. But since this water wasn't seasoned I'll have to taste this and see if it requires any additional salts. Yeah, it does. Under normal circumstances, if I were going to cook the rice in this pot, I wouldn't have made as much rice. Or if I made as much rice, I would have used a bigger pot. But if you are cooking this in, in a pot, excuse me, if you are cooking this in a pot, you have to lower the heat at this time, then let, cover it up and let it cook until all the water is absorbed. And when, the all, when all the water is absorbed, you would put a plastic bag over the cooked rice and lower the heat and further let it cook. But I'm not going to follow that route today. I have two baking trays that I have over here. And I'll be transferring the rice in there. So I'll turn off my stove here and carefully lift up this pot of jollof rice that I'm making here. And I'll stir it up well and divide this between the two trays. If I had added a lot of tomato paste, the color of the rice would be redder than this but I didn't add enough tomato paste, but it will equally come out great. So I'm going to divide this between the two trays. After transferring the rice into the two baking dishes here, I had to add the remaining water that I had. So I seasoned it well, and now I'm going to cover this up with some aluminum oil here. Make sure it's tied around the edges. Now do the same for this one. And bake it in the oven. So I'll put this 
in here. Remember my oven was preheated to 385. So I'll let this cook for 40 minutes. But the first 20 minutes of cooking, I'll have to take it out and stir and put it back in again. The first 20 minutes of cooking is up, so I'm going to open this and like this. If you are comfortable stirring the rice here, you can do that. But I'll take this one out and put it on this spread out napkin here. It's, bit, it's cooking very well here. So I'll stir this up well and put it back in. And I'll do the same for the other tray of rice in there. So at this stage, it's still a great idea to taste the rice to be sure all the seasonings are the way you want it. Tastes really good. So I'll take the other one out, stir it, and put it back in. This is the second tray I just took out. And I'll cover it up. and put it back in and let it cook an additional 20 minutes. So depending on how big or how much um, temperature that you put in when you, you are cooking, it might use more than 40 minutes of cooking. So for the next additional 20 minutes, if it's cooked, that will be perfect. The 20 minutes is up. I'm now going to check the rice to see if it's well cooked. From the smell, I think it's, uh, it's cooked. Great, that looks really yummy here. So growing up, we like to eat the burnt part of the rice. So if you want to have the burnt part of the rice, you have to let this cook an extra 10 to 15 minutes so that the bottom part is bent and is very crunchy and tasty. The other tray is equally ready. And this this way. And I'll add a tree as well. Woo! That looks wonderful already. Yes. So this is all cooked. So I like to cook my jollof rice this way because when you have a big um, party and then you cook it properly and put it in the trays, it's very easy to take them in and out or transport them anywhere you want so there you have the finished product jollof rice then i'll put the meat on top so if you made fried fish or egg or fried chicken then it goes well with this and some salad on the side so let me give it a this this is hot so you have to be really careful this tastes really good so there you have jollof rice that you can eat for any occasion and it's equally a good dish for children's lunch so you can make this at the weekend and serve it to the kids when they're going to school